Hey there guys and gals and welcome back once again to the D4A channel. Today we are rebuilding our struts and we are going to get them from looking like this to looking like this. Now the first thing you're going to need to do in order to rebuild your strut is of course remove them from your car and then take them apart. If you want to see how that is done, there's a video and you can click on the suggested video right there that shows you in detail how to do that. So after we have removed and taken apart our strut, here we have all the individual parts of the strut. Now we're going to go and say a few words about each of them and also about how to inspect them and decide what needs replacing and what doesn't. After that, we're going to, you know, assemble the strut and have our new shiny fully rebuilt strut ready for installation on the car. Another thing that's important to mention before you start ordering parts for your strut rebuild is to check to what extent your struts are rebuildable. Sometimes the strut cartridge cannot be removed from the strut housing. In that case, you have to buy the unit as a whole because it's replaced as a whole. To know whether the strut cartridges can be removed from your strut housing. Simply check the top of your strut housing for a nut like this, or this, or something similar. This is a gland nut, and if it's present, that means it can be removed, and that also means your strut cartridge can be replaced. So starting with the biggest and most obvious thing, here we have the spring. The task of the spring is to absorb bumps and other imperfections in the pavement. In my case, I have decided to get some IBA Pro Kit Springs to replace my old springs, which I hope will be a nice balance between aggressive looks, comfort and handling. So here's a detailed look at my new IBA Pro Kit Spring versus my old spring that I had installed on the MR2. Now this is a no-name brand and it does lower the car quite a bit, as you can see from this picture here. It does make the car look nice and aggressive, but when it comes to the comfort and handling performance, I have to say that I was unhappy with these springs. So let's look at some of the differences. As you can see, the IBA spring actually has more coils. And the biggest difference is this part right here. When this spring is installed, this is the part that compresses the most and it generates a big height difference between these two springs when installed. Now the IBA spring may not lower the car as much as this one. It won't make it, you know, as aggressive looking as this spring. But when it comes to everything else, this is a far better spring. As you can see, the stiffness of this spring, I cannot get it to bounce no matter how hard I push. On the other hand, the IBA spring, even with just a bit of force, you can generate some decent bounce. Now, you may think that this sort of bounciness is bad and that the stiffer spring is the better spring. Actually, in reality, the opposite is true. When I drove the MR2 with these springs, I never felt confident enough to push the car to its limits. Whenever I hit even a small bump, even a tiny imperfection mid-corner, these springs made me feel very uneasy and I felt as though the car was about to lose control. I think the IBA springs, which are actually better at, at absorbing road imperfections, but also still keep the car stiff enough, will actually enable me to enjoy the car more and be able to drive it properly at its, at its limits and still be safe while doing that. Next up, we have the shock absorber or strut cartridge. This part goes inside the strut. In my case, I have decided to go with some adjustable Coney Yellow Sport Shocks. When rebuilding your struts, I definitely recommend always replacing your shock absorbers unless they have some very, very low mileage on them. I have decided to go with the Coney Yellows because after a lot of research online and reading a lot of different forum posts and reviews and whatnot, I have found the feedback on these shocks to be overwhelmingly positive. When it comes to the MR2 in particular, I haven't managed to find a single person that has installed the Coney Yellows in their MR2 and has been, you know, unsatisfied with the results. This is a sporty shock that's going to provide a very noticeable improvement in the handling performance of my MR2. 
Another great thing about it is that it's adjustable, which means you can adjust it for a more aggressive, a stiffer ride when you feel like it, or you can adjust it to be more comfortable when you simply feel like, you know, taking a more relaxed drive. Next up we have a strut housing. As I already said, this is where the strut cartridge is going to go into and everything else is also going to be attached to this part right here. I decided to use the opportunity of my disassembled struts to restore this part so I had it sandblasted and then powder coated. Next up we have the upper spring seat which goes on top of the spring and the little rubber insulator that goes right here. What it does is it absorbs any sort of noise, vibration and harshness that might otherwise occur if this thing wasn't here and if the seat and spring would make contact. There was pretty much nothing to replace here so what I did as well is I powder coated the upper spring seat and I just got some new rubber insulators. Next up we have the bump stop which is installed like this onto the shock. What it does is actually it prevents as the name suggests your entire strut from bottoming out and it's the final line of defense against damage and horrible uncomfort that can occur if your suspension bottoms out. This is a very simple component, just one solid piece of rubber and another one just like it inside of this sock. Mine's in good condition, it's just, you know, as I said, rubber, so no need to replace it unless it's completely worn out or damaged. Next up we have the top mount and the dust seals. The top mount is what mounts the entire strut to the chassis. Inside the top mount we have a ball bearing. Let me just focus that for you. So here we have a ball bearing with a very worn out dust seal. Here we have some new dust seals. Always re replace the dust seals when rebuilding your uh, struts. Also you can replace the entire top mount in case the bearing inside has some play or it makes a lot of noise or is excessively rusty. In my case the bearing is actually in, in very good condition so I won't be replacing this. I'll just replace dust seals and put some new grease in there. And finally here we have the small parts. This is the gland nut. This is what keeps the shock from leaving the strut housing. Here we have the top nut and washer. This is what's going to go on top of the shock right here on the top mount and finally we have another little dust protector that's going to go here and prevent dust from entering inside the shock. Now it's time to assemble the strut and actually do our rebuild. When assembling the strut a big table vise just like this one is really helpful to hold the strut down so you can work on it. I decided to sandwich my strut between those, these two pieces of wood to avoid any sort of, you know, cosmetic or other types of damage to the strut housing. Now tighten it down reasonably well, but don't overdo it because you do not want to risk deforming the strut housing. The first step is to actually install our shock absorber or our strut cartridge. But before that, we are going to fill the strut housing with some foil. When it comes to the different fluids that you can use to fill your strut, you basically have three choices. Number one is engine oil, number two is automatic transmission fluid, and number three is coolant. Now, it doesn't really matter which of these three fluids you choose to put inside your strut. Why? Because they're all good at two things. Number one is heat transfer and number two is rust protection. Heat transfer is important because the strut cartridge, actually the shock absorber, when it works hard it generates heat. And you want the fluid inside the strut to transfer that heat away from the shock body and onto the rest of the strut. Rust protection is also of course important because the strut cartridge is going to spend probably a long time inside the strut and if you don't put any sort of rust protection in there it's going to rust badly and removing it is going to be a huge pain. What I personally like to do is I like to take the strut cartridge and dip its bottom part into grease to ensure the ultimate rust protection and then fill the strut with some automatic transmission fluid and put the strut cartridge in there. If the cartridge doesn't fit inside the housing properly, there's actually some extra material on the bottom of the strut insert that you can grind down until you can achieve proper fitment. After you have installed the strut cartridge, 
you can wipe off the excess fluid and then install the gland nut. There are special tools for the installation of gland nuts like this one that have two holes in them, but I found a big adjustable pipe wrench to work really well. Once the gland nut has been tightened, you can slip on the little plastic dust protector and proceed to install the springs. So here we have the springs for our front struts and here we have our rear strut springs because today we were building the front strut, we are going to use this bad boy here and to install it on our strut we are going to need to compress it. Now to properly compress a spring we are going to need a special tool which is a spring compressor. What a spring compressor really is, is just two pairs of claws with a bolt going through them and once you tighten the bolt the claws get closer together and by doing that they simply compress the spring so you can install it onto the strut. When installing the spring take care of this little ridge right here on the strut. It's against this ridge that the end of the coil is going to press against when it's installed. Once the spring is on there you can slip on the bump stop. Next up it's time to install the upper spring seat and inspect it for some sort of marking. Here in the case of my spring seat there is this little arrow that says out and this is the part of the spring seat that needs to be pointed outwards actually towards the wheel of the car. You can then simply install the spring seat on top of the spring. After that you can install dust seal, grease up the little bearing inside the top mount and install the top mount itself. After that you can install the washer and top nut and tighten it. After that, all that's left to do is to slowly release the spring compressors and you are done. And there you have it boys and girls, one fully rebuilt strut ready to be installed on the MR2. Now I'm really looking forward to installing these and witnessing firsthand what the awesome Connie Yellow Shocks and my iBuck Pro Kit springs can actually do. Now I'm certain it's going to be a world of difference compared to my previous yucky setup. Now, of course, there's going to be a lot more videos on the suspension to come and we are going to be covering everything from the install to different adjustment settings and, you know, so on and so forth. So definitely stay tuned for that. Uh, if you have any sort of questions regarding the rebuild or the struts or anything else suspension related, don't forget to hit me up in the comments section and I'll be, you know, happy to answer to the best of my abilities. Also, don't forget to share, like, comment and subscribe, you know, for more content just like this that I hope is informative as well as entertaining. I guess that's pretty much it for today. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll be seeing you soon on the D4A channel.